is Alex Mercer. I'm the reason for all of this. They call me a killer, a monster, a terrorist. I'm all of these things. Hero or villain? Good or evil? Right or wrong? For years, characters in superhero games were presented in these absolutes, with little in the way of nuance or ambiguity. In the late 2000s, however, the genre saw the anti-hero rise to prominence, with titles like The Darkness, Infamous, and Darksiders offering players an opportunity to be so much more than the Man of Steel or the Mad Titan. Radical Entertainment's prototype provided one such experience. The short-lived action franchise initially hit the PC, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360 with prototypes released in the summer of 2009. Radical Entertainment and publisher Activision Blizzard believed they had an instant success on their hands. Both parties needed it to succeed, at least. Given the risk involved in developing a new intellectual property, not to mention its arrival at the tail end of America's Great Recession. In an effort to mitigate this risk, Prototype's protagonist, Alex Mercer, and the conspiratorial world of intrigue in which he operated were designed with sequels in mind. And one sequel it did indeed receive, in the form of Prototype 2, which launched in April of 2012. Still, none of the studio's efforts, no matter how inventive, were enough to attract the interest of a mass audience and secure Activision's approval for a third prototype installment. Unfortunately, the future of these super-powered adventures were not all that suffered from the franchise's inability to pick up steam. The resulting demise of Radical Entertainment proved equally devastating for a studio that had long delighted players with quality experiences. This is the history of Prototype. Following its founding in 1991, the Vancouver-based Radical Entertainment primarily developed relatively unremarkable games of the licensed and sports variety. By the time Vivendi Games acquired the studio in 2005, however, Radical had obtained considerable renown, courtesy of Crash Bandicoot entries and licensed titles such as Hulk and The Simpsons Hit and Run. The Vivendi purchase didn't alter much in terms of Radical's operations, though. In fact, subsequent years saw the developer produce two more Crash Bandicoot games in addition to the generally well-received Scarface, The World is Yours. It was in the summer of 2005 that the team's creative heads, namely executive producer Tim Benison and writers Dennis Ditwiller and Eric Holmes, began conceptualizing the idea that would eventually become Prototype. Radical fully understood the risk in transitioning from exclusively developing known properties to crafting an entirely novel one. Benison told the Georgia Strait as much in 2008, explaining that production costs for an original IP were high, while recognizable franchises sold more reliably. But the appeal of a fresh idea success potentially culminating in further financial rewards, particularly if it birthed a franchise in its own right, made Radical's developers eager to embark on a project of their own design. After all, no one wanted to simply create a one-off remarked then-studio president Kelly Zmack during a 2008 interview. Yet the rigors of the video game market dictated that such desires were not merely enough. Radical also needed to produce something lucrative, an ongoing series to sustain the then 15-year-old studio, and to everyone involved in its production. Prototype seemed the perfect candidate to fit that bill. Announced in August of 2007, Prototype was touted as a ruthless power fantasy slated for a summer 2008 release. Players would assume the role of Alex Mercer, an amnesiac who awoke in a New York City morgue with no recollection of his identity or the happenings in the world around him. While discovering his newfound superpowers compounded Mercer's state of confusion, they also offered him a host of abilities that fueled the power fantasy, which players would engage in via an open-world map set in Manhattan. Titanium, Radical's proprietary game engine, powered the ambitious action adventure, and thanks to its onboard physics system, the studio was able to achieve solid simulation of various AI-driven elements. 
freely moving pedestrians, vehicles, and enemies among them, making for a dense and dynamic open world. As a result, gamers who invested in Prototype did more than merely interact with its Manhattan setting. They had the ability to rain unprecedented levels of destruction down on the city and Mercer's adversaries. His special powers were marketed as an integral part of Prototype's appeal, considering contemporaneous sandbox games predominantly centered on gangster narratives. Few experiences, then, allowed for an extensive range of mobility beyond operating motor vehicles, and none were capable of presenting the sheer amount of carnage on display in Prototype. The game's dynamic traversal options manifested in Mercer's gliding, wall-running, jumping, and dashing skills. In myriad ways, these abilities worked in tandem with his absorption-based powers, a byproduct of the blacklight virus whose infection gave him biomass consumption and shape-shifting abilities. One example of the ruination caused by Radical's clever meddling of these skills came in the form of an elbow-dropping wrestling-like upgrade that could decimate military tanks. In many respects, it all seemed an exercise in violence for the sake of violence. Alex Mercer was no hero. He wasn't a pure villain either, according to what Activision's associate brand manager Steve Fuller shared in an interview with Videogamer.com. Instead, Radical designed Mercer as an ultra-violent anti-hero, inspired by the likes of Robert De Niro's Taxi Driver character and Hannibal Lecter. This characterization found Prototype's protagonist on a revenge quest to uncover the truth about his past. Anyone who stood in his way, even innocent bystanders, were likely to become unsuspecting victims of his wrath. The gratuitous violence that stemmed from Prototype's action-packed gameplay functioned within a morally gray framework, an attempt on the part of Radical to avoid the usual polarization of ethical dilemmas in video games. During a Eurogamer preview, marketing lead Chris Ansel explained that with an anti-hero at their fingertips, players could determine the shades of gray themselves. Radical's disinterest in exploring morality most notably informed the overall design philosophy for Prototype, which emphasized ultimate freedom and ultimate choice. Whatever the team imagined a player would want to do, they worked to make it possible. The execution of the studio's vision did endure a fair few hardships, though most may have not proven too detrimental in hindsight. During the middle of production, for example, Radical Entertainment's parent company underwent an organizational shift when Vivendi and Activision merged to form Activision Blizzard late in 2007. Fuller speculated that Prototype counted among the handful of projects that Activision retained because it gave the publisher the opportunity to enter the open-world genre of games with something interesting and new. Several months thereafter, the game was delayed to give Radical the time necessary to fully realize the potentially groundbreaking adventure audiences were anticipating. The same period also brought about the unceremonious cancellation of Prototype's planned cooperative component. However, its abandonment allowed the developer to focus all of its resources on crafting a solid single-player experience. The year-long delay did have one coincidental effect on marketing, specifically with regards to press coverage. Prototype's push to 2009 resulted in it having to compete with Sucker Punch Productions' Infamous, another sandbox superhero game that emphasized the thrill of unconventional traversal and comic book-inspired abilities. To a degree, both titles were created in a vacuum. Therefore, neither Radical nor Sucker Punch were aware of each other's work in progress. Infamous creative director Nate Fox echoed this sentiment in a Vice retrospective revealing that he first heard about Prototype while watching G4, long after his project's E3 2007 unveiling. Despite sharing a similar concept, Infamous and Prototype differed quite drastically. Prototype's gameplay relied heavily on brawler mechanics, whereas the combat in Infamous prioritized range attacks. In addition, the good versus evil dichotomy ingrained in Sucker Punch's game informed the intensity of protagonist Cole McGrath's abilities. The more heroic his behavior, the more precise his powers. On the contrary, excessive acts of villainy evolved his power set into something quite destructive. Prototype's lack of choice on this front, as well as Alex Mercer's preset anti-heroic characterization, fostered an arguably unmatched visceral gameplay experience, whereby players could eviscerate NPCs without moral consequence. 
This level of disparity didn't stop media outlets from pitting one against the other, however. Due to Infamous's PlayStation 3 exclusivity, the media-contrived competition additionally contributed to the PS3 and Xbox 360 console war, especially since the games released two weeks apart. Neither seemed to suffer in terms of sales, though. Moving a relatively meager 192,000 copies in the United States, Infamous managed to outsell Prototype on the PlayStation 3 in June of 2009. But Radical Superhero Venture shifted approximately 420,000 units in the same month on the Xbox 360 alone. Regardless, both sold appreciably enough to warrant the release of sequels, with Prototype going on to sell 2.1 million copies as of early 2012. Prototype raked in considerable critical success, too, reviewing favorably across the board. Unsurprisingly, the variety of powers received much of the praise. Gameplay-wise, critics and gamers alike agreed Radical's initial attempt at a new IP suffered mightily from bizarre controls and combat encounters that were often too hectic. Strikingly unpolished visuals that failed to reflect the look of real-life Manhattan earned prototype a few knocks as well. Though many found the conspiracy-laden narrative intriguing at the very least, Alex Mercer became quite the divisive figure. Mercer's disregard for his fellow New Yorkers only magnified his penchant for violence, an off-putting trait that made the character unlikable to some. Radical's VP of Technology, Dave Frakia, addressed this in a Eurogamer interview ahead of Prototype 2's launch, while sharing the team's hope that players would easily take a shine to the franchise's new protagonist, Sergeant James Heller. Yet despite being a shot in the right direction, the follow-up would prove to have a difficult time overcoming its predecessor's flaws. Activision Blizzard's investment in Prototype 2 meant Radical Entertainment's creatives were able to fulfill their dream of building an original franchise. Shortly after the first installment's launch, the team began pouring through player feedback and critic reviews, all in an effort to improve upon Prototype shortcomings. One criticism in particular concerned its dull-looking environments. Associate producer Jonathan Lim told Complex that to remedy such issues for the follow-up, Radical built the Titanium game engine to push it as far as possible, giving rise to Titanium Engine 2. Other major changes between the original prototype and its successor included a new playable character in James Heller, clearer character motivations, refined controls, and an updated arsenal. A number of these innovations were featured in Prototype 2's debut trailer when Radical revealed the title during the 2010 VGAs, showing off Heller and the promise of a 2012 release. Despite the hype generated by Radical's announcement, not all fans were thrilled by the prospect of playing a character other than Alex Mercer. Speaking with Digital Spy weeks ahead of Prototype 2's launch, Frakia claimed some gamers were so offended by the change that they threatened to not purchase the sequel at all. To allay these concerns, Radical posted two separate videos, one explaining why Mercer didn't return in the leading role, the second detailing Heller's background. Interestingly, the team struggled with how to proceed after the events of Prototype, which saw Mercer unleash the blacklight virus in New York's Penn Station, consequently infecting the whole city. A core question regarding the franchise's future was how best to challenge Mercer himself, a figure who essentially became godlike. One early idea revolved around the removal of Mercer's powers. Worried this would ruin his character, Radical decided against it. Enter James Heller, a military sergeant who'd been deployed in Afghanistan during the events of the first prototype and returned home to find his wife and daughter dead because of the ensuing chaos that spawned from the virus's dispersal. Blaming Mercer gave Heller an emotional motivation with which players could empathize. This premise additionally solved Radical's conundrum of how to challenge its former leading man. The answer rested in twisting Mercer into the antagonist, placing him in the crosshairs of another overly powered being, another prototype, the perfect opposition. That Mercer also infected Heller heightened the intrigue. Radical hoped said intrigue and the video explanations would bring the series back into the good graces of previously disgruntled fans. Beyond the shift to a new playable character, Radical further augmented the world of Prototype by drastically redesigning its New York City setting and overhauling the gameplay. Devastated by Mercer's release of the Blacklight virus, 
the world-famous metropolis quickly morphed into something unrecognizable in the 14 months between Prototype and Prototype 2. Consequently, the city became known as New York Zero, a police state divided into red, yellow, and green zones, each contaminated by varied levels of infection. Unlike the original entry, though, Prototype 2 did not permit players to leisurely explore the city from the start. In an attempt to shepherd gamers through a more comprehensible story, the three unique districts were made accessible one at a time, driving players forward and leaving them curious about what their continued progression entailed. The tools players used in their venture through New York Zero and Prototype 2's Tale of Vengeance similarly received a revamp. This was thanks in large part to Radical adjusting the pace of combat in response to critiques about the first installment. In altering the overall presentation, the studio slowed down the camera and provided a much better view of the battlefield. Changes of this nature additionally introduced strategic elements, such as tactical dodges and increased attack times, giving gamers greater command over the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. And with an evolved suite of abilities, this degree of control bolstered the incredible combat from Prototype, while equipping players with unparalleled dominance. One skill in particular was touted above the rest, Tendrils. Associate producer Jonathan Lim told Complex, Tendrils functioned as intelligent webs, forces capable of stringing enemies up, in addition to serving as a black hole-like ability that draws objects in and implodes. Mutations represented yet another new addition to an already expansive arsenal, acting as perks that customized Heller with power-ups via a limited number of slots. Ultimately, however, tweaks to Prototype's basic formula would fail to yield the results that Radical and Activision hoped they would achieve. Now we're talking. By and large, critics felt Radical's efforts didn't translate well to the final product, as Prototype 2's April 2012 release was primarily met with mixed reviews. Most critics agreed that while the tragic deaths of Heller's loved ones made for a compelling backstory, Heller himself represented little more than a crude cliché, whose characterization hinged on excessive vulgarity, unmitigated rage, and hardly anything else of substance. The overarching narrative wasn't well received either failing to improve upon the weak foundation laid by its predecessor. In fact, many argued the sequel's dull and predictable plot left much to be desired, resulting in an incredibly forgettable tale. Missions and the open world fared no better, due to repetitive tasks, scant side quests, and few incentives for players to remain invested. The new unlockable abilities ensured the series' improved gameplay felt rewarding, though. Plus, a refined combat system gave way to a great deal of mindless fun, as did the streamlined controls and well-crafted traversal mechanics. Yet, several reviewers contended these enhancements were hindered by Heller's inelegant animations, as well as a bothersome lack of challenge in combat situations. User reviews indicate fans more or less agreed with the general critical consensus. However, there were players who posed a fascinating theory about Prototype 2's malign shortcomings, reasoning that the absence of challenge fueled the mindless fun and guaranteed players were always in control of the ultimate superhuman. But no rationale could save Radical's action-packed sequel from a soft market performance. By June of 2012, estimates suggested the title had sold a dismal 390,000 units across the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, a stark contrast to the 420,000 units moved by the original game in a month on one console. Radical's dream of building an expansive franchise was cut short within months of Prototype 2's release, with Activision significantly reducing Radical's staff in June of 2012, effectively shuttering the Vancouver-based studio. In a statement, Activision noted that though it invested heavily in Prototype, the IP failed to find a broad commercial audience. No doubt the lackluster sales of Prototype 2 acted as a catalyst for such a move. A reduction in staff meant Radical ceased development of its own projects, including early plans for Prototype 3, which were revealed via leaked screenshots in 2019. 
Employees who remained were reassigned to support roles on other Activision published ventures. Radical continues to function in some capacity, as evidenced by it receiving credit as a support team on Bungie's Destiny. Interestingly, however, a listing on Activision's website makes no mention of the studio being involved with the abysmally reviewed 2015 release of Prototype Biohazard Bundle, a PS4 and Xbox One remaster of both titles that Activision launched without a traditional reveal. Thus, it appears Radical is but a lingering ghost of the ambitious studio that once set out to awe gamers with its remarkable creativity. And still, the prototype faithful maintain a semblance of hope for a third installment. For now, though, the carnage, mindless fun, and sheer brutality that powered the adventures of anti-heroes Alex Mercer and James Heller will simply have to be relived in the memories of those who cherish them most. Thank you for watching. We'd like to take this time to thank, by name, the generous patrons who have pledged to our Hall of Fame reward tier. Maktoum Saeed Al Maktoum, Paul Cousineau, and those currently subscribed to our producer reward tier. Dari Rap Sikurtson, EmuMovies.com, Lame Game Man, Milkshake, Schizo Lingbo. If you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing to our channel and backing us on Patreon.